Cause I need you more and more I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do Cause I need you more and more 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 God, I need you more More and more Lord, I need you more Chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, Lord, oh. I need you yes, I more and more. Yes, I do. Oh. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, oh, yeah. cause I need you more and more, more. Lord. God, it is you who hides us from the rain. Yes. 
My God, my God, my God, my God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Us me from from the rain. Come to tell you, my God. My God is awesome. Heals me. Heals me when I'm broken. Strengthens me.
protector, 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 protector. Tell 
to us through his word of song on this morning for my hallelujah belongs to you 
Glory, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless you on this morning. It is our prayer. We're so grateful to be able to come to you again. Amen. In this virtual worship, uh, the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ, coming to you in your own home. Amen. Wherever you are, know that God is right there. Amen. And how God is still awesome. Amen. And we're still chasing after him. And he still moves mountains. Amen. And he still hides us from the rain. Amen. God is so great and so kind on this morning. This morning we're going to, amen, to break to us the bread of life on today. Amen. It's our very own Minister Rory Gaines. He's going to come. Amen. And he's going to break to us the word of life. I want to tell you God has a word for you on this morning. Amen. God has a word for you. And we need we need to uh, pay, be attentive to the word of the Lord. Amen. He is an anointed young man. Amen. And he's going to break to us the bread of life. Come on, uh, uh, Minister Gaines. Bring that mic with you. Amen. As you shall come and break to us the bread of life on today. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Lord. Amen, church. Amen. It's good to be here today. Today I won't be before you long. I'm going to be coming from a scripture in Acts chapter 16, verses 25 through 34. Say amen when you have it. Okay, and it reads, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At, at once all prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The, jailers, the jailer called for lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Then they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all, of the, all the others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds, and immediately he and all his house were baptized. The jailer brought them to, into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole household. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. So the title of today's sermon is called, I'm Waiting to Break Out. First of all, I'd like to thank God. I'd like to thank God for allowing me to be here today under the leadership of Dr. Jones. God has given me a word that I believe will help somebody as much as it's helped me. Coming from Acts chapter 16, I chose this particular passage of scripture because it highlights a few of God's key characteristics. There are many things about God that make him him. For example, God is eternal. He is the self-existing one, one that has no beginning and no end. Nobody created him, and he's God all by himself. Now, thank God for this, because how can I go to him if he has someone else that created him, if I need to go to that God, then that means I have the wrong God that I'm serving right now. And if I got problems, I know that he can solve them all because he's already done everything by himself and he needs no others. Another characteristic of God that we've come to know is that he's omnipotent and he's sovereign. 
This means that he's all powerful and there's not one other being in the universe more powerful than he is. And also, he has the final say over how and when to use his strength. When he stepped out of nowhere, created everywhere, he had the ultimate power to say, let there be light. Yes. And he also had the sovereignty to say, it is good. Right. Which is good news because to know that the same man who created the universe, I call Heavenly Father. Right. Now, now, those are attributes that we know about God, but in the text, I believe, it highlights some of his key attributes that we ought to know. And that is that God, first of all, is a planner. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come to pray and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when and when you and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from the place of which I carried you to exile. One thing you should know about God is that planning isn't just what he does. A planner is who he is. When it comes to the way he interacts with us, there's never anything that happens outside of his plan. Now, no matter what we may think is going on, when things go wrong and we have no contingencies, God is already has the resources ready for that situation because there's nothing that happens that he didn't already see coming. While he can see, while we can see to the corner, God can see around the corner. Amen. While we can see the sunshine in the morning, God can see the clouds and the rain in the afternoon. And he has an umbrella for you waiting in the car. While we have to also realize that not only does God make and design his plans, he carries them out. And he sees them through to the end. Isaiah 55 and 11 reads, So as my word goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve to propose and, pro and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Now, when God sets a plan into motion, it can't help but come to pass. When God designs a plan, it isn't just because he's bored or needs a new project. He has something he wants to put into motion and complete. Completing plans isn't just what God does. A completer is who he is. Whenever he has a plan he hasn't completed, just hold on a minute because that's a sure sign that he's about to do what he always does and breathe things full circle. I don't know who this is for, but you may think that the situation you're in is the end but just hold on because chances are if you're feeling locked up right now you're in the middle if Paul and Silas say like Paul and Silas say I'm waiting to break out if you feel like you've been running in circles trying to get over through and around an obstacle the chances are that you're in the middle and you need to just say I'm waiting to break out if anybody right now feels they're stuck in a bind a spiritual bind and maybe you've gotten yourself into a mess that you can't get yourself out of or you're being attacked and there's no peace you are definitely in the middle and you need to say I'm waiting to break out but I have good news today because the space you're in means that God is waiting to make something happen That means the master of time and space is getting ready to step into and rearrange things according to his plan. Tell somebody, I'm waiting to break out. Now, this brings us to the next dilemma that Paul and Silas were in. If we, if we could be real with each other, most of us would admit we have a problem with waiting. We have a problem with the middle part. We're okay with the beginning when we're excited about what God is about to do. We're okay with the end when God does what we know he's going to do, but we have a problem with the middle part. 
So I propose three things that will help us get through the middle part, which is in between the beginning and the end. All right. Three things I was sure not only will you make it through, but God will get his purpose across. Right. His plan will be completed the way he wants it to. First thing, worship while you wait. All right. Second thing, watch while you wait. And lastly, work while you wait. Now verse 25 starts off at a key part of the story. Here we have Paul and Silas who were put into prison for exercising a demon out of a girl that the town was using to make money off of her, out of her predictions and fortune tellings and divinations. Now, obviously when you mess with people's money, they started to feel a certain way about that, right? So they had Paul and Silas beat and thrown into prison without even holding a trial. Right. Here we are at midnight, the same night we have Paul and Silas praying and singing songs. Uh -huh. The start of the day being beat and thrown in prison, the end of the day praying and singing songs. Uh -huh. Now I've never been to prison but I've been beat before and let me tell you that there was no praying or singing songs involved. Uh -huh. But I'm convinced that Paul and Silas knew something that we don't even know sometimes, no matter what we may be at or where we may be at in our spiritual, spiritual journeys. That's right. And I'm going to suggest that Paul and Silas knew that they had to worship while they waited. Yes, sir. And that they also knew that if I serve a God who was a planner, who always brings his will to fruition, I should praise him for what he is going to do and who he is. There's no use in me worrying while I'm in a space of confusion. There's no use in me wishing that I knew the details and the plan and how it's going to work out. It's not for me to know, but my part of the plan is to worship. Right. Jeremiah 29 verses 12 through 14 outline that. God says, then will you call on me and pray to me and I will listen to you. Let me say it again. Then you will call on me and pray to me and I will listen to you. And our role in the midst of this while God is working it out is to worship. Yes, sir. Worship God on the front end while he's bringing it to fruition on the back end. Yes, sir. While we're bound in our situations on the outside of the control of God, we've got to worship him for what we already know is about to happen. God says, while you're in the middle part, the waiting part, the part that there is chaos all around you, I've designed something that will get you through and it's called worship. The word worship means to express adoration and reverence for something that means a particular value to the worshiper. So, Worship and the worshiper. He shows why worshiping God is not like worshiping anything else. So when we worship other people that we value, no matter how much we love or like them, the buck stops there. It's a one-way street. No matter how much I give, love, and cherish somebody and worship them, I cannot get anything in return because they don't have anything to give me in return. But when you worship God, it's a two-way street. When you give God praise, he gives you something in return. God says, you will call me and pray and I will listen. It's an exchange because when man listens, they say something. All right. But when God listens, he does something. Yeah. Now, let's talk about in Psalms 34, when David said, I sought the Lord, and the Lord heard me, and the Lord delivered me from all my fears. The poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved, me, saved him out of all his troubles. In Exodus chapter 2, it talks about God hearing the groans of the Israelites and delivering them out to a land where they can worship him. He hears them, 
he delivers them, and they go to pray and sing songs to him. That is the purpose of all that is going on in his plan. He said he, remember, he will remember the covenant that he made with Abraham. So he heard the cries of their sorrows. Worship is a two-way street. To put it more plainly, in the church, we've come up with a saying that when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Amen. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. This is because while worshiping, God is ready to hear me. As soon as I send up my praise to him for what he's worth to me, as soon as I send him my adoration and show him how much I really love him, he's ready to listen. Yes. And when he hears me, he immediately starts shouting me with his blessings. When you worship God, love fills the room. When you worship, peace comes from on high. When you worship, God sends his protection around your house. Amen. When you worship, God mends broken families. God heals bodies. When you worship, it's a two-way street. You give, and God gives you more that you could even give to him. Amen. So this is what Paul and Silas knew because they're in prison, but they're singing and praying. They were singing and praising so much that there was an earthquake. Right. The Bible says the ground began to shake. The foundations of the prison began to shake. God, help me develop worship that causes earthquakes. My, my, my. Suddenly in the middle of their worship session, an earthquake shook the foundations of the prisons. The doors flew open. The doors flew open and shackles came off their feet. Right. Which brings me to my next point. I believe that what happens next was a direct result of the determination they showed worshiping God. They saw the bondage they were in, but didn't let that stop their praise. They worshiped right. while they waited. Right. But next comes an equally important part of their waiting. They watched. They watched. Verses 27 and 28 say the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open he drew a sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped but Paul shouted don't harm yourself we are all here yes, sir. now you have to watch while you wait in other words you have to be ready for what God is moving and what he's going to do. You have to make yourself available to be used. Right. Because it's one thing to worry while you wait, but it's another thing to be so confused and so consumed with worry and doubt and self-preservation that you're no longer useful to God. All right. Oftentimes in our stress, we're so worried about getting out of the situation, we're not worried about what God is trying to get out of the situation. Uh -huh. We're so worried trying to get out of the situation. We're not worried about what, try, what God is trying to get out of the situation. The only thing in our mind is God delivered me out. And we don't realize that he has a need for us in prison. Because yes, God wants, to, he wants us to worship him. But he also has an objective he wants to accomplish through us while we are there. Because if we look at the text, it suggests that worship is a catalyst for what follows. The praise is an igniter for the God, for the wildfire God is about to start. Right. And if Paul and Silas were only concerned about getting out of prison, nothing that happened next could have even been possible. Right. I've read this text a few times while preparing the sermon, and there's always a few strange things that stand out to me. Right. First, when the doors flew open... Nobody moved. All right. That's right. Nobody left. <laughs> nobody ran. Nobody, nothing. That was it. They stayed there. Now, if that was me, right. if there ever was a sign from God that it's time for me to get out, I'm free. Favor ain't fair. Bye-bye. See you later. That's, right. <laughs> That's it. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm reading it, and I realize that nobody moved. So, and I understand that in the Roman Empire, prison was not used as a form of punishment. Prison was used as a in-between time for either your trial, your execution, your actual punishment, or whatever it is. So, so there's some people in here that were probably on death row waiting to be executed. Right. They were in prison either waiting to be punished, to be publicly beaten, 
to be executed, whatever it was, and nobody moved at all. Now, another piece of the context is this is not the first time God finessed the prison system. In chapter 12, God breaks out Peter. Peter is awakened from his sleep by an angelic visitor and is told to get dressed and let's go. Then he proceeds to walk him out of the front doors without any confrontation at all. Since Paul knew about this occurrence, I'm sure it crossed his mind when the doors flew open that this might be also my chance to break out. But Paul knew that God had more to do with him being in prison than him breaking out of prison. He had more use of him in the jail than him escaping. Because in verse 28, it says the jailer in charge with keeping the prisoners ran down, saw that the doors were open, and was about to kill himself. If you're like me and didn't know why, the first thing he would do is, before investigating, and call, and call his supervisors and talk to anyone else. If you're like me and you're wondering why he would do that first before anything else, chapter 12 has an answer in verse number 19. It says, there was a commotion against the soldiers, and after Herod found that Peter had escaped, he investigated the two guards who Peter were chained to that night, and he had them executed. So the jailer in charge of Paul and Silas already had this in mind when he got downstairs and saw that the doors were open. He automatically assumed everybody was gone, or even if one person was gone, that means it was off with his head. But the next strange thing that happened is Paul yells from the inside of his cell and says, don't harm yourself. We're all here. Not only did Paul not hurry up and leave, they waited for the man to come down called for him so that they that he could find them still there and save his life. Yeah. The same man who'd mistreated them in harsh conditions of a Roman prison now has grace extended to him yeah. by the man who the men who he beat. What if I told you that your prison is your mission? My God. Your prison is your mission. My that the reason you are bound up right now is so that God might work a miracle through you that God wants you to be purpose-driven and not opportunity-driven. At the heart of watching while you wait is knowing that God wants to look for his purpose. He wants you to look for his purpose and not your opportunity. He wants you to look for his purpose, not your own opportunity. Because if we lead a life that's led by opportunity, it's more likely that we'll miss God's true intent of every situation. And opportunities looks at an obstacle and says, God, please get me out of this so I can have peace. Someone driven by purpose says, God, please get me through this so I can fulfill your will, your plan. When you miss that important aspect of God's plan, you run the risk of no longer being useful to God. We will go from being an asset that God can use to being an obstacle that God needs to remove. Paul and Silas knew that they could be free from the jail, but there was work to do at hand, and God could be better served with them being in jail and in prison. It's through this selflessness that God moved through them and touched the hearts of their, even their fellow prisoners. Now, watch the text. Paul and Silas are watching while they waited, cleared the way for the last part of their role in God's plan, and that's work while you wait. Verse 30 says, the jailer called them out and said, what must I do to be saved? They said in 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. This is the part of the process where surrendering to God's will is most crucial because this is where the first two parts of the process lead you to actually being used by by God in the middle of your trials. This is where work while you wait becomes everything, every, because every, this is where work while you wait, where you work while you wait, because everything around you has been happening for this exact moment. This is the reason you've been in jail. Now it's time to work while you wait, because God has been behind the scenes with Paul and Silas since the beginning, and he's been moving towards this purpose as they've gone down the line. 
In Genesis, there is a story of a man who was also in prison while he was waiting to fulfill God's plan. A junior by the name of Joseph was thrown into a pit, sold into slavery by his brothers, and eventually thrown into prison after working in Potiphar's house, who was captain of Pharaoh's guard. See, Joseph had a dream, but he didn't know exactly how it was going to play out. He told his brothers before they beat him and sold him that he would be ruler over all of them. He said, your sheep will bow down to my sheep. Your houses, your household, your children, your family will all be subject to me. The youngest of 11 brothers, by the way. So you can imagine why that didn't go so well. But in all that, what happened, Joseph kept his composure and his conduct. He conducted himself in a way that he knew that God was going to get something out of him and elevate him in a position to be used. And he couldn't be used by God if he were caught out of conduct in Potiphar's house when the wife mistreated him and accused him he said no I have nothing to do with that if he had accidentally or not accidentally slipped up and actually slept with the wife he couldn't be used by God because then he'd be guilty and God would have no use for him so also while he was in prison he met a cupbearer and a baker since he was known as a dreamer and interpreter of dreams people often came to him with questions about dreams that they had He was in prison but still worked while he waited. He could have said, well, this is it. There's no way that God can get anything out of me. I've been sold into slavery. I'm in prison. There's probably no hope. This is is about it. I can't escape any further than where I'm at. But instead, he interpreted the dreams because these two men had asked him, and he'd only asked that when either of them be reinstated, that they remember Joseph in prison. That when they get out and get back into Pharaoh's palace, that they tell Pharaoh about him, the man who had interpreted their dreams. Every chance he had, Joseph exercised the gift God had given him. Fast forward two years, and Pharaoh has a dream that needs to be interpreted. The baker says, I know who a guy, I know of a guy who did that for me. His name is Joseph. And this is where Joseph's faithfulness is rewarded. He was faithful to his gift, and he was faithful to working while he waited. Instead of wallowing and worrying and being in his sorrows, he continued to be faithful to the gift that God has given him. So Joseph showed up at the palace, interpreted the dreams, impressed him so much that Pharaoh anointed him to run the kingdom. Joseph went from being prisoner, prisoner to prime minister in the same day. But the story doesn't end there because God always has to get his. When the famine comes through, Pharaoh dreamt when the famine comes through that Pharaoh dreamt about, ten men show up from a foreign land asking for help. It turns out these ten men were his brothers, and all these years, not only did he get reunited with his family and clear up some family garbage, he's able to provide for his family in a way that he never could have if he'd given up on God's plan. What you want to understand from both Joseph's story and Paul and Silas' dilemma is that God is working on your behalf when you go in and when you come out. God has orchestrated your failures and your success. That's great news because those steps you lost were just a part of God's plan. Everything that you lost is a part of God's plan just as much as everything you gain. So every time you take two steps forward or two steps backwards and things start to fall apart, get ready to praise him because this means your 10 steps forward are about to happen. Every time something falls apart, give God glory because it's about to be put together in a way much better than it was before. And out of it, God is going to keep you planted on a firm foundation because he has need of you. The one thing Paul and Silas can say is that I'm glad we went down because we came up and a soul was saved. We were beaten, and that's all right because at the end of it, salvation came and all his family was saved that never would have known Jesus if not for me being in prison at that time. We were beaten, but that's all right because it's for the glory of God. For For everyone listening to this right now, Where you are, in your house, in your sanctuary, no matter where you at, you have to realize that God has a plan. 
And whether you're in the beginning or the middle, just hold on. For everybody waiting to break out of this shelter in place, to get back to work, to seeing family and friends, to get back to worshiping in God's house, God is speaking to you. He says, I hear you. I hear you, and I promise I will deliver. My plan will be fulfilled, but it can only wait until you are done waiting with the middle part. It can only finish until you're done waiting with the middle part. And if you could just hold on to that, not only will you be restored, I'm going to give you a testimony that is going to shake the ground beneath your feet, and chains will be broken. Generational curses will be broken. Whole families will be restored. Before we, want to, before we leave, I want to leave you with a scripture. This is one of my personal favorite scriptures. Romans 8 and 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yes, That's good news today, family. Amen. So I'm going to pray right now, and as we look to the Father, I want every heart to be lifted and emptied and humbled and lowered so that God can fill it with his purpose. Amen. Every head bowed, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for coming to this place, Father. We thank you for the gift of life that you've given us. We thank you for the health that you've given us, Father, for the protection that you've given us in our families, the way that you've been a fence around everything that's been trying to get in our household. We thank you also in advance for what you're about to do, for we know right now we are in a waiting part. We're in the middle part, God. We ask that you just give us strength, give us courage, give us everything we need to make it to the end, God. Finally, we ask that we be used, not just for our own purpose, but for your glory, God, and for your will. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor's going to come up right now. Oh, come on and clap your hands and give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. I know you've enjoyed that word on today. Amen. I know you have enjoyed. I'm waiting for to break out. Amen. Not only am I waiting to break out, I'm ready to break out. But in the meantime, I believe I worship while I wait. And I believe I watch while I wait. And then I believe I'll work while I wait. God bless you, Minister Gaines. What a mighty word we've heard from the Lord on today. Amen. God's word is alive and well. And I know that you have received a great word from the Lord on today. And so we're encouraged. Take this word. Amen. L live by this word. Amen. All week long, this word will be playing on our church's website. It'll be playing over and over on our church's website all week long. All you have to do is go to the website and click on it. And you can hear this word all over again. Amen. Worship while you wait. And you can tell somebody, I'm waiting. I'm just waiting to break out. That's all. I I'm just waiting to break out. Amen. But in the meantime, I believe I worship while I wait. I believe I'll watch while I wait, and I believe I'll work while I wait. God bless you. It is our prayer. Our Father, we thank you now for all that has been said and done. We thank you for your power of your word on today. We thank you for the man of God that has delivered your mighty and powerful word. If there be any, God, that are listening to this broadcast that don't know you in the pardon of your sins, we pray that you would forgive them. Wash them and make them clean. God, we pray that if there's any there, God, that heard this word and was convicted to their heart, that they have not been worshiping, nor watching, nor working while they are in prison, I pray that you would forgive sin, that you would cleanse us up, give us a brand new purpose and a brand new reason. God, after hearing this word on today, help us to come up to your word and to live thereby. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. We thank you now. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, don't forget to, uh, to join us Tuesday night. Don't forget to join us Tuesday night for Bible study right here on Zoom.
on Facebook, on our church's website. Amen. At 6.30, the prayer line will be open. We'll be praying at 6.30 on the prayer line. Amen. God bless you. Whatever you do, let the world know that you're waiting to break out. Oh, let the church, let the church say amen. Let the whole church say amen. Good Lord, God has spoken. So let the church say amen. we thank you for your word on today we thank you for the man of God that brought broke to us the bread of life we thank you because your word is one of hope one of assurance one of peace one of joy a word that simply says we're waiting to break out but while we wait our oh God we will worship you while we wait we will watch and while we wait, we will work. God, we will do that which you have assigned our hands to do. Bless us now as we go through another week of shelter in place. Yes, Lord. Speak to our minds. Speak to our hearts. Touch our bodies. Keep us whole and well and healed. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke everything that is not like you all diseases we rebuke it in Jesus name and God we speak help to your people in Jesus name remember the sick among us touch heal and deliver remember the bereaved families comfort as only you can and dear God keep us in your care as we go down from this place but never from a divine presence even though we are in different places, the church is yet united. In Jesus' name, we pray one for the other. We love one another. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank the Lord. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Know that we love you. Know that God loves you. And know that you're waiting to break out. Amen. Praise the 